And now it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hook up. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Yamaha Outboards, official motor sponsor of Let's Talk Hookup, Royal Polaris, the world's finest long-range sports fisher. By Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup and Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best, Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray and Rock God Rick Maxa. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. I'm Pete Gray with Rock God Rick Maxa. We're in the Mighty 1090 Studios with our annual visit from El Presidente, Dave Pfeiffer from Shimano. We're going to have a great time talking, fishing here, talking Shimano. And a lot more. You stay tuned. This is Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice. Let's talk hook up on the Mighty 1090. You've heard all about it. You know the anglers catching fish have it. So what's holding you back? It's a fact. Fishdope.com really does help you catch more fish and burn less fuel. Fishdope.com is the only fish finding service with a spotter plane along with a crew of top anglers on the water almost every day that report actual locations and catches. You can get daily catch reports from Point Conception to San Martin Island 365 days a year. Fishdope.com is for everyone, whether you have your own boat, fish on your friend's boat, or a sport boat. Fishdope.com has online planning tools, moon phase, tides, hot bite icons, and more. So bottom line is, if you don't have Fishdope.com, well, you're probably missing a lot of bites. Membership costs less than $50 of gas, and that's for the entire year. That's right, one year. What a bargain. Plus, use the special code to save $20 on a new Fishdope.com membership. Check it out today. Fishdope.com. Catch more fish, burn less fuel. If you are looking for a powerful, smooth, great casting reel, at an affordable price, check out the Shimano Torium HG. It's up to 30% smaller than the previous generation, but still has the same line capacity. The smaller S-compact body design and one-piece die-cast aluminum frame provides more rigidity and lighter weight. Torium now has EI surface treatment and has tested up to 700 times the corrosion resistance of past models. The Shimano Torium HG is not only better on the outside, the inside is amazing with a cross-carbon drag providing up to 24 pounds of drag drag pressure from a star drag reel. It has a sealed roller clutch and 6.2 to 1 brass gears. The machined aluminum handle has a larger knob to make it easy to crank in the big fish. The new lightweight aluminum spool gives you better casting and control. Available in three sizes, the Torium HD is the next evolution in compact, rigid, and powerful saltwater star drag reels. Get it now at your local Shimano dealer. This time of year, the fishing offshore is hit and miss. Some days you struggle, the other days you come home with your limited yellowfin. Believe me, you never know. But unlike the unpredictability of fishing, you can always count on Ford F-Series pickups, America's best-selling trucks, 39 years and counting. One reason F-150 is so popular with fishermen is the high-strength military-grade aluminum body panels. Chevy, Dodge, and Toyota bodies will all eventually rust, but not F-150. Its body panels won't rust ever. That's pretty important for folks like us that launch boats on a regular basis. An F-150's revolutionary body is bolted to a solid steel frame to make it stronger, more capable, and more efficient than ever. When it comes to trucks, fishermen and fisherwomen can always rely on Ford. And right now is a great time to buy. Special incentives have just been announced. That means bigger savings and lower payments on F-150. Log on to their new website, buyfordnow.com, for all the details. That's buyfordnow.com. Then stop by your nearest San Diego County Ford dealer, They'll be glad to hook you up. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. What a fun show today is going to be. Indeed. Welcome <clears throat> to our good buddy and the president of Shimano American, Mr. Dave Pfeiffer. Good morning, David. Good Dave. morning. Great to have you in the studio for your annual visit to Let's Talk Hook Up. We really appreciate uh, you taking some time out of your busy schedule to uh, be <laughs> here uh, with us today. And so uh, we always ask the, the ever-so-present question over the last... 25 years. What's new at Shimano? <laughs> I know there's, you know, there's, there's lots new. I, I, honestly, though, I think the bigger topic is just what's going on with our fishery here. And I was thinking on the way down, you know, we, we really need another hour today. So right? I think you need to call those other guys, whoever's after the show, and just let them know that yeah. they're not on today because Sorry, we yeah. have too we much to talk, to talk about. about. <laughs> Way too much to talk about. Yeah, we do. Sure. We do. But a lot going on new at Shimano, as always. Um, 
a lot of freshwater stuff, which, you know, we tend not to talk too much about on this show, but we're doing some cool things in freshwater spinning. And then there's the, uh, you know, all the rumors out there about the Tranks 3 and 400. And, and so, yeah, those those will be on the way, which are really exciting. And then the rest is just still there's things that have been in the product line, but I think are still really new for people, you know, out here, given the fishery that, that we have um, or that we had and hopefully will have in the coming year. So, yeah. Um, yeah, lot, lots going on. Lots of pictures of you with big bluefin, <laughs> with uh, big orca poppers sticking yeah. out of their faces and yeah. the Tranks 500. Uh, yeah. uh, I mean, those are big fish on yeah. a small reel. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, you know, lots of people caught big tunas this year, and I, and I caught them on spinning gear, and I caught them on Tranks and everything. But catching them on the Tranks, I was using that power gear Tranks a lot. For different things, both poppers and bait fishing, and that was really amazing. Explain the power gear versus. The, it's just a it's a lower gear ratio, and and um, you know once you hook those big fish, th- that power gear was just it was easy as could be. I mean, we had fish up to 150 pounds on that reel, really with no trouble at all. Fishing 65 pound uh, Power Pro or Max Quattro, I fished both 80 pound Max Quattro, and then you know really super short top shot. And boy, if you like to throw conventional, you can throw a popper. It, you know, I was, I was thinking on the way down, uh, just the whole way, the whole bite last year sort of transitioned yeah. and what we learned. The first trips down early in the season, the very first trip, I was thinking, you know, the fish around small baits. I took small poppers and I took lighter gear and we were throwing the, and we caught like very first trip, you know, that 50 to 70 pound grade fish. And we were so excited. Went back like it was a three day weekend. Went back uh, the day after the, the next day. And brought bigger poppers and bigger gear and was kind of like <laughs> feeling our way out sure. there. And we caught bigger fish. Bigger. We caught like 100 to 130 pound fish. And so that got really exciting. And then we started moving more and more to spinning gear. We started shortening the top shots, making them heavier. We realized that they wanted the big plugs. They didn't care what pound yeah. test line you were fishing. And then we could reach them all with spinning gear really just super easy, far easier. So then we learned that, you know, well, two things. One, after some really long fights, we started losing some fish on treble hooks because we seemed to be pulling trebles. So we went to, like, assist hooks, and that seemed to be better. And then I learned that, you know, conventionals have advantage and disadvantage. So conventional reel, the casting, obviously, and in terms of the distance and everything else is much more difficult. Um, and But fighting the fish is nicer, especially straight up and down. Spinning, you get the cast. But spinning's limitation is if you're straight up and down on a big bluefin circling, it's tough. So we learned to lead the fish with the boat. And then all of a sudden we were catching those fish in no time, and we weren't getting just destroyed. So then, it, you know, it kind of all came together. You'd slide up. You'd fire a super long cast with the popper on the spin gear. You hook them. You lead them with the boat. Done deal. Go get another one. Go That's get so another great. one. Go get another one. And, you know, it's just kind of like you keep advancing it, and it all came together, and it was great. And then the popper bite was over, and then we fished Desperation on the bait and on anchor, and that was amazing. And then we moved out to the tanner, and we caught him out there on the tanner. I got in two nice trips on the tanner, and that was just unreal. Probably totally a year, right? Just just yeah. hearing that story inspires me yeah. about how so, cool I mean, catching him on live was. squid on the bottom on the tanner, <laughs> I mean, just like you would fish yeah. sea bass. That, I got to tell you, blew me away. I mean, I'm talking like literally a sinker rig on the bottom. On the bottom. And these, you know. 100 pound blue pounders coming in there and slurping up that squid. Sweet. Is there anything cooler? Explain leading the fish on the boat. Literally, what we would do is when we were fishing the heavy gear, is as soon as we'd hook the fish, we'd take off six, eight, ten knots, whatever it took to get way out in front of the fish and get them behind the boat in the bubble trail with as much drag as we could put on them. And then just keep the boat moving that way. And you would literally just plane the fish right to the top. I mean, you, you catch these fish, 150 pounders, and, you know, 10, 15, 20, 20 minutes tops. Wow. And, so um, just kind of idle. Once you get them behind the boat, then just kind of yeah, idle. Yeah, very fast idle, depending on how fast they're swimming. And as long as you could keep that pressure pulling them forward, those fish would come. They'd come right up. They'd never get down and dirty and circle. The last thing I want to do anymore is fight a fish in a circle. I won't do it. Yeah, that's the big Even thing. Even when we them. fished, you know, I fish a lot of light tackle for the tuna club, and we fished the tuna tournament, and we were fishing 20 and 30 pound Dacron mostly, and even 12. And it was the same thing. We had fish up to 85 pounds on 20-pound Dacron. Jeez. And we would just lead the fish. And you lead the fish and you lead the fish. And all of a sudden, just boom, they'd pop right up, right to the surface. But if you try to ever fight that fish from a dead boat, straight up and down circle, it would never, ever, never ever, ever happen. <laughs> because wow. you, you, there's no way to lift them in that deal. So, yeah, leading the fish with the boat and all that. And, and it just completely changed that whole experience. Now, 
you know, Desperation and Tanner, that was a different story because, you know, we didn't want to move off the fish or we were on anchor. So you kind of had no choice but to sort of rail rod and, and, and fish them that way. But, um, yeah, it was a lot of learning from this year, yeah. huge amount of learning from this year that I think is going to pay off if these fish come back. Right. And if they're even bigger, which logically would say, you know, I mean, from two years ago to last year to this year, we might be looking at, you know, two to 250 pounds plus fish on a regular basis and maybe some fish bigger than that That's because scary. there was plenty of fish over 200 this year. So, um, yeah, people, you, you got to, you know, people got to keep changing. And that's what I thought about, too, on the way down, I think is, is amazing. Is, you know, we have – a fish is a fish anywhere in the world. A bluefin tuna is a bluefin tuna just about anywhere, a yellowfin tuna. And people all over the world fish for these same fish differently, and including California. But I think there's something to learn from all these different markets. So totally. to just dismiss, well, I will never do that. And it's like, well, I'm taking a real look yeah. at it because, you know, you see them do something different or better in a way to catch these fish. And – you know, it's worth looking at because we can't get too set in our ways because things are changing, you know, so much in the fish and how these, what these fish are doing. So I think you just kind of have to always be on the lookout for different tackle, different techniques, different ways of fishing and, and learn from it. So that, that's, that's kind of my take anyway, or at yeah. least that's what I try to do. So explain the gear you were using at Desperation Reef Tanner Bank, a uh, uh, rail rod, Calica. Set up? Yeah, um, Desperation was a, a, a little bit different than um, Tanner because Tanner was a straight squid bite, and we were fishing. We weren't fishing squid. At least we didn't have squid on, on the Desperation bite. So, uh, but we used some similar gear, basically either Italica 12 or Italica 16, and um, we were fishing it with the seven foot extra heavy Therese in the rod holder, you know, and fishing you know 80 pound Power Pro, and for that bite we were using a regular full-size wind on, you know, um, they, they were a little touchier on Desperation than they were on Tanner. So we were using 40 uh, wind on on Desperation. But on Tanner, Talica 12, Talica 16, that, that rod setup that I mentioned, and um, 60 or 80 pound wind on. And nice. that was it. Yeah, it was just beautiful fishing, beautiful fishing, sliding egg or a rubber band sinker and, you know, done deal. Nice. So the t- let's talk about the – the difference between the the, the um, tranks that you were talking about, the HG versus the, the lower mm-hmm. gear. Um, most of the people here were kind of keyed in on the HG. Yeah. But you're but by going with the lower gear, you had more power on bigger fish. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know you're not working a power soup a plug a popper. Pardon me, super fast. Mm-hmm. You didn't want. In sense. fact, at least in my experience last year, if you worked a popper fast, you didn't get a bite. Mm-hmm. My my big secret as the year went on is I was completely dead sticking the popper. I would throw it in the middle of the foamer and just not move it, there and wait. not move it at all. The fo- Sometimes, if you didn't get bite when the foamer was up, the foamer would dissipate and just leave the popper sitting there and just sitting there waiting, waiting, and all of a sudden just kaboom, and one would just compl- – you'd think the fish were gone and That's they'd explode right. on it. But you're not working the popper fast, and you want – that that you want to be able to get cranks on them. You got to be able to get cranks. So it's plenty fast enough to take up slack if you're moving the boat on a fish. But then, man, you you can just keep getting cranks and keep getting cranks and keep getting cranks. Because the other thing, more learning on the bluefin, there's there's I think a, a lot of people, myself included, have this misconception that the bluefin was going to take a ton of line right. and he was going to go way 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 down. Not true. Yeah. Not true. Those fish do not take much line. They usually go out. And then they go down, and then they come up, and then they go down. But they never go that deep, and they never go that far. I was never worried about getting spooled on that tranks. Now, again, fish up to like 130 pounds, um, and even fish up to 100 pounds on anchor on desperation, which I also fished the tranks, we never got had any risk of being spooled whatsoever. So as far as a super castable you know, reel for guys that just really like conventional and throwing poppers, that, that, that the tranks is just – Absolutely, there, the way to go. Your brand and any other one combined, there's not a reel that even comes close to fishing a popper for tuna with braid that even comes close to working as good as the tranks. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Any anything. Period. Period. No, it's really unique product it's that way. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So if you add, so if you, ideally, you want both the high speed and the uh, the power gear. Yeah, but I think if you only yeah. have the money for one, which one would you buy? I, you know, I don't know that I can answer that because, you know, if I'm going to use it for surface iron yellowtail fishing and school size tuna fishing and all that, I'm going to go with the high gear. Yeah. I'm absolutely going to go with the high gear. So, 
but if I if I want that versatility for bigger fish, then you got to go with the with the power gear. But I, I I wouldn't necessarily recommend the power gear for surface iron fishing unless you're seriously old school and you are really using old old school jigs that were designed Offboard. way back when the reels were lower speed. Uh, but I, I don't think, you know, that's a lot of people these days. But, um, yeah, so then, you know, the one that's – it's the high gear. So – but, I you know, I, I, I got to tell people I would not go try to fish 150-pound bluefin on a regular basis on the high gear. It, the reel will handle it. You're just – you're going to struggle with getting cranks um, that you don't struggle on the power gear. Makes sense. On that okay, gear now, that, now let's take the same subject, but let's talk about spinning mm-hmm. versus versus tranks. If you, knowing what you know today after all the experience you had catching big tuna last year, would you be throwing the Tranks uh, uh, power gear or would you be throwing a Stella or a Twin Power spinning? I'd be throwing a spinning only because, at least as the season went, you had no idea what size fish were going to be in a given school. You could be looking at fish that were coming out of the water at that you would guess at 100 pounds, give or take. But you could get bit on a 150 or 200 pounder. Uh-huh. That's what got really crazy. So there, I would absolutely throw uh, more like a 14,000 size Twin Power or Stella, okay. because then you're you're set for whichever whichever happens. So you'd have um, more confidence with that 14,000 size spinner in your hand than the conventional. Yeah, at that point, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Like, I'm going to get should a 225 bite. You're you're feeling more confident with that. Absolutely, than a, cool. tra- a tranks. Yeah, at that point, yeah, absolutely. Just because I've got more drag pressure mm-hmm. and I've got just kind of I, – I do have more capacity from the standpoint of um, heavier line. I'm fishing a little bit bigger. I'm fishing minimum 80, and um, I'm fishing a different rod. Everything in the equation is just different. Yeah. It's just bumped up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, look, again, if I hook that fish on a Tranks power gear, I'm going to probably be on them a while, and I'm going to get them only because I can't put as much drag pressure on them as I can with a Stellar or a Twin Power. But – I want to get them and move on. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to be <laughs> there for that quick. long. So, but there is no question with a Stellar or Twin Power. You know, you you, you ask Kingsville who had a 249 in seven minutes oh, on a Stellar. Seven minutes. Crazy. Yeah, it was actually he, he claims 14, less 000. than that, but in total on the gap in the <laughs> deck, in less, less than seven less. minutes. <laughs> That's yeah. wow. Yeah. That's impressive. And he had did two of those, and the other one was only like, you know, like 12 minutes or something crazy like that. I don't remember exactly, but. Um, yeah, I, I would absolutely uh, go with a big spinner. When I'm sliding up on those big, big, big schools that are mixed fish, I, I'm throwing, I'm throwing the big Stellar Twin Power. So, uh, what are you putting on there? 80 pound Max Quattro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's my favorite. Yeah, I tie a super small, short bimini, and then a very, very short top shot of, um, you know, 80 or 100 pound fluorocarbon. How short are we here. talking? How short is very short? Three feet, 10 feet, less 20 than three feet. feet. Okay. I want it so the knot is outside the tip when I make the cast. And then the uh, on the tranks, what are you putting on there? Um, really similar. I mean, I'm fishing like 60 pound or 80 pound um, uh, for the most part. Because again, usually I'm throwing the tranks when I'm pretty certain that the school of fish is more in that 50 to 130 pound uh-huh. range. And yeah. by using the Power Pro Max Quattro, you get yeah. more capacity and so less chance of yep. getting spooled there too. Oh yeah. And again, I'm, I'm not so much worried about spool as I like a I always like a full spool of line. I hate fishing a, uh, a fish where you're trying to get cranks and you're fishing a half spool line or whatever. So, you know, you put 80 pound Max Quattro on there and you've got all kinds of line, all kinds of line to make good long cast, and um, you know you're going to be fine on the fish. Wow. But I mean, look, there's a lot of options. But the truth is, is you know you can go with one outfit and catch everything from 50 to 250 pounds if you want. You can do that. In which case, my opinion would be you go with a Stella 14,000. Or maybe even up to a 20 if you really want to be certain. You'll catch everything. If you want to adjust more to have fun based on the size of the school, now you're talking you can do a smaller spinning, an 8 or a 10, or a Tranks power gear, and then you've got your your bigger spinning. Now you've got two outfits, and you've got it completely covered to where you're going to have the most amount of fun with whatever size fish that you, you, know, that you encounter. I mean, it's, you know, so it's really just up to what you want to do. But I... Again, it's only my recommendation is that I think a lot more people out here need to take a long look at spinning to really make the kind of cast that you need to make uh, on those fish. Because, look, there were some days when we were all by ourselves, we were able to slide right up on them to literally they were, I mean, almost running into the boat. And then I don't care what you threw, you were going to get a bite. But there was a lot of other days where that was not the case, and you needed to make 
a really, really long, long cast with that popper. And granted, there are some guys out here, Ricky, et cetera, that you can throw a, a two-speed lever drag that far. But I'd be willing to bet there's not that many. Yeah. Right? And, and you know, and once you get proficient with a spinning reel, you can throw a, a Stella or a Twin Power a pretty long way. Oh, you with can. With a lighter oh, believe yeah. me, you can throw it forever. Yeah. And the problem, is, the thing is, is that there is just no risk of backlash. There's no risk of blowing that yeah, cast. Yeah. If that is the only spot of fish that you have up for the whole day, the last thing you want to do is get overexcited and backlash, you know, <laughs> your lever drag reel or whatever. Uh, th- again, this, but I'm also fishing that on an 8-foot, the Therese heavy popping rod, which is so easy on you. I also heard a lot of people fishing, you know, 9-foot, 10-foot rods, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. There is no way. <laughs> but So look, what are you fishing it on? An 8-foot Therese uh, extra heavy popping rod, popping you know, rod. spinning popping rod, and that thing is just a beast. It's but now. it's so easy to fish, and it's so easy on you as an angler. And, and other people make good, you know, spinning rods that way. But that this is total East Coast adapted gear. It's sure. the kind of stuff everybody uses in, in – uh, the Upper East Coast to fish those bluefin on the poppers, and they usually catch on average a lot bigger fish than we do, but uh, or have been up until this past year. But um, you know, again, it's a personal preference. I'm not here to preach. I'm just saying, man, there was days where, look, we got one shot in the morning, yeah, that's and a, it's, you had to make a really long good cast, and then you caught that fish, and then there was a couple of days we never saw another spot of fish all day, and I would really feel horrible if you slide up on that, you get excited, you throw popper falls short, you got a backlash. Day's over. over. Yeah. As <laughs> Day's we, done. As we know, there are a lot of naysayers yeah. in the spinning world for big fish. Yeah. But once you catch a big fish on a spinning reel, you become a believer. It, again, it's just it's time, place, technique um, that, you know, it just calls yeah. for adjusting your, your gear. And then, look, you don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. Maybe people were successful all year. I just know that there was a number of days that without that gear, there no way we would have been as successful a, as we were. Look at you. You've taken one of the best anglers on the coast, Jimmy Kingsmill, and turned him into a spinning guy. Oh, absolutely. Jimmy's yeah. the, he's a freak about it. He carried yeah. it with him uh, <laughs> you know, every day. And the first trip that Jimmy and I made, he would not pick one up. I believe that. <laughs> no, it's straight. He wouldn't pick one up. Funny. He's like, oh, well, you know, I just don't think you need to do that and everything. And then, you know, he saw it and he's like, hmm. And then when we got on the big fish, when we went back the, the day after, and we threw the big popper, and he caught one that was like 110 or 125 pounds. Um, it was me and him and Pat Holmes, and we we had a triple on the same spot of fish. And he caught that fish on on the spin rod, and all of a sudden he looked, you know, he hooked the fish, and he's yelling gaff gaff, and you know we went over gaffed it, and he, and he just stood there in stunned belief. And he told me he said I never would have believed you could catch a fish this size that fast on this kind of gear. And he was done after that. He's like, you got to get me one of these. And I got him one. He carried it all year. And he had two fish over 200 on it. And, and like I said, one of them was like a, you know, five, seven minute fish. Jeez. So, um, but again, that, I just believe for people, there's so much success in adjusting your technique to what you have to do. Next year might be a totally different year. Who knows? Yeah, we don't know. But I think with some of those big fish, I don't think you're going to be able to get it, get right up on top of them is going to be my guess next yeah. year. And there's going to be probably more pressure because now everybody's kind of got yeah. the kind of got the got the thing going. Everybody's right? got the bug. Yeah. So, um, next question about spinning, twin power versus Stella. Is there a, a market difference between the two when you're pulling on a big fish? That's a no. great question. No, it's a good question, and um, there are nuances in the difference between Stella and twin power. It's just sometimes when we we introduce a series like Stella was the um, our flagship, and then we later introduce Twin Power. And I got to say, I think Twin Power is the best value going in a big spinning reel, period, of ours or anybody else's in terms of incorporating all the high end, really super base important features into a reel um, at, at at really for the for the for the money. And yeah. it, it, I, I fished. T- I fished, i got to be honest on there, I fished Twin Power and Stella SW side by side, and there was times I had to look down and see which one I got. <laughs> really? Ah, that's cool. Okay. Because and it's and that like good. You, you yeah. learned they're all like the... half the price. Yeah, they're, they're pretty much half the price. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would say, you know, your, your Twin Power is, it's hard to beat. Yeah. It really is. It's, a, it's an unbelievable reel. Now, the only difference is we don't go as big in Twin Power as we do Stella. That's where some of the differences come into play that allow us to make the Stella 20 and the Stella even the 30,000. How so. big does uh, Twin Power come? 
up to fourteen thousand. Fourteen, okay. which is so for the no fish we and no, no for the fish we had last year. That was fine, yeah. you know. Um, but who knows? Yeah. Next who year. knows? Honestly, who I think. Knows? I mean, there's a chance next year that we could be throwing all twenty thousands because of the size of the fish, um, or. After all these rains and everything, who knows? Maybe we'll just have 20-pound albacore again and the big bluefin. Back to Trinidad 14. <laughs> yeah, the big, big, <laughs> big bluefin won't show up. So, I, you know, who knows? But. Well, as you can hear, we have a great show lined up for you today. I'm learning a lot, and I hope you are too. Yeah, how cool is this? And just going to be a great time, great information. And we want to hear from you. If you want to be a part of Let's Talk Cook Up this morning, join in, in the fun. Ask a question to Dave. There's two ways you can be a part of the show this morning. And first is with our local line, which is 858 area code 457 1090. Again, 858 457 1090. That's our local number. Or you can reach us toll free. That toll free line is 877 792 1090. One more time, 877 792 1090. Not only are we talking all kinds of great fishing and talking Shimano today, we have an unreal prize for one lucky caller at the end of the show today. And in anticipation of that big blue fin showing back up next year, somebody is going to get the ultimate spinning reel to catch one of those giants. And just like we talked about, a twin power 14,000 is going to be given away to one lucky caller at the end of the show today. How cool is that? Yeah. Awesome. Pretty awesome. But as you can hear, we got a great show, 858-457-1090 or 877-792-1090. And when we come back, we're going to be taking your phone calls. Lots of great information coming your way. You stay tuned. You're listening to Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice. It's Let's Talk Hook Up on the Mighty 1090. This is Greg Stotesbury from AFCO. For more than 58 years, the American Fishing Tackle Company has been recognized as the premier manufacturer of precision-built offshore fishing tackle. AFCO continues this tradition today with an innovative technical fishing clothing line designed and built by fishermen for fishermen. From our next-generation waterproof shorts like Tactical or Stealth to our new anhydrous waterproof jacket and bibs, the entire AFCO clothing line is purpose-built with the latest AFTEC fabrics and features designed to deliver for the demanding angler. To find AFCO products, go to AFCO.com and find a dealer near you. Hey, the Los Angeles Boat Show has moved to a new location. It's now at the Fairplex in Pomona, conveniently reached by all points of Southern California. It's coming up January 19th to the 22nd. You can see the latest models of marine gear, the newest models of boat, tech gadget, accessories. It's all there. There's going to be great things for the kids like face painting and more. And it's Thursday and Friday at noon to 9 p.m., Saturday at 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. So it's a little bit long hours there. It's Sunday, 10 to 6. Admission's just $15 and lots of discounts. Check it out at the Fairplex in Pomona, January 19th to the 22nd. The LA Book for decades, the Kona Kai has been considered San Diego's premier marina, resort, and spa. Now with millions of dollars in upgrades, the Kona Kai Resort is a destination for travelers worldwide who can live it every day. The docks and services are the finest quality in San Diego, and the Kona Kai is the closest marina to the open ocean. As a marina tenant, you enjoy many benefits, including secured free parking, a deluxe health club, swimming pool, and more. Enjoy discounts at their restaurant, bar, and hotel. If you don't have a boat, there are membership available at a very affordable price. The Kona Kai Club has been offering members a home away from home since 1953. Members can spend their days on Kona Kai's private beach, meet new people in the club's modern lounge, share a meal with family at Bessel Restaurant and Bar, or pamper themselves in Spa Terra. Check out ResortKonaKai.com on the web for more information, to reserve a slip, or inquire about joining the club. The Kona Resort, like being on vacation every day in your own backyard. Are you feeling that itch to get out on the water? Come fishing on the American Angler and reacquaint yourself with some familiar faces and make new friends. Captain owners Brian Kiyohara and Sam Patella take pride in every aspect of the American Angler operation, from their loyal and trusted crew to the sashimi-grade fresh fish you'll take home. It's easy to find a vacation that fits your schedule. We have everything from day and a half to 10-day trips and longer. Call me at the office. 619-223-5414 or check us out at AmericanAnglerSportFishing.com We want you to become a part of the American Angler family. Here's John Ireland for Rancho Leonero. You know the ranch is unique. It's one of the few places in the world where you can still drive ATVs up the beach. We have fishing from the beach. We have dive trips that we run to Pomo in a number of different spots. Kayaking, of course, has been real big. We were one of the first hotels to introduce kayaking. 
The ranch is small, you know, it's intimate, it's 34 rooms, so everyone gets to know everyone. The old saying, where everyone knows your name. Well, truly at Ranch Lanero, the employees do know pretty darn near all our guests' names. And what's even more interesting is most of the guests know each other's names. Very personal, very intimate, and a special, special environment. Two miles of beachfront, a mile on either side of the hotel. Ranch Lanero is really the last of the old-style Baja fishing resorts. 1-800-646-225. Five two, 1-800-646-BAHA. And RanchoLayanero.com. I'll personally guarantee your best fishing experience and vacation at Rancho Leonero. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. All right. We have Mr. President here, Dave Pfeiffer from Shimano. Uh, Dave, a uh, busy guy, and we sure appreciate him taking the time. But I'll tell you what. So much going on with Shimano, and Dave is certainly. How do you keep track of all this stuff? Because you gotta have to do bicycles too. Yeah, I do, but yeah, bigger interest here. <laughs> yeah, maybe, I, well, yeah. Just spend time where you're yeah, interested. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So uh, before we, the phones are packed. Everybody wants to have a chance to talk to Dave and win that Twin Power 14K that uh, that Shimano is giving away for us today. Um, the the new Tranks 300, 400. We'll add into the line of 500. Mm-hmm. Are they going to come in two different gear ratios, too? They are. And um, um, we actually haven't officially released information. I can't believe you're getting so much out this here. Is like, this is groundbreaking I stuff. Told Good my job, guys, Pete. If you don't ask. Good job, just, Pete. I, I know. It, well, right? I told my guys yesterday, I said, guys, there's so much information out there that I, I got. I, we're just going to talk about it. So, Kick. yeah. Oh, cool. There's, two, nice there's 300, and, right yeah, 300 and 400. Um, and they're in two different gear ratios. There's the the standard like 5.8 to one, and then we have a high gear which is 7.6 to one. So um, the, these are not just 7.6. Yeah, the, these are not just a like a tweaking of something. Uh, you know, I, I think I read comment that it looks like a beefed up product. It's this is ground up, totally new. Right. Um, you know, and it's it's going to be an amazing kind of reel. Available for Fred Hall Long Beach. That's the target. Yeah. You'll be able to see him at least at Fred Hall. Yeah, you can be able to see him there. The first time. Yep. The thing that I can't wait is Tranks. Tranks did such a good job of being so powerful and smooth, and the thought of having that inside something that's teeny and fits in the palm of your hand, I mean, that's going to be so – Torque, you know, you guys are the ones that made everybody realize how important power or yeah. torque is in a reel, and – you know, and it just seems like every year that you guys evolve and push things forward, that gets better and better and better. And you always can't believe that it could be better. And having that now in a low-profile, quote-unquote, bass reel, just it, it's going to be – that's going to be huge. Yeah. Power is everything. Yeah. it'll You know, it will be really versatile for a lot of things. For, of course, you know, calico bass fishing, which is a giant market out here. Uh, yellowtail fishing, which guys have been – a lot of people have been going smaller and, and smaller – it crosses over into the freshwater big swim bait market, and now we got water again in California, so I'm guessing there'll be a lot of uh, folks doing that. Uh, but it'll be good for popper fishing. I mean, it'll be good for whatever you want to do. And I, I think one of the things, honestly, in my mind, that Tranks finally overcame is this whole stigma against level wine reels. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And it that shows you lose that, some casting distance with that you lose yeah. casting distance, that you got to worry about drag, that you got to worry about, and, and you know, I think Tranks really overcame that for a lot of people that that is just not an issue in a modern reel today and especially if you get the way to make these reels really really work that tranks also showed is don't make them super wide and get that you know that real wide spool and the angle between the level wind and the thing so these are very similar to tranks where they're a taller spool a little bit narrower and so you get more line pickup you get more power you get more everything and um you know with the Pagani aluminum body with um, our high efficiency gears. These things are they're dynamite. Wow! Can't so wait. the seven point one you said seven point six. What application is that? Uh, a lot of the inshore folks want that for working different baits. The versatility of having that high speed um, for like calico fishing. For calico fishing, um, jerk baits, different things. Uh, so. But bo- both, and again, you know, high speed now, and you can still have plenty of power. So the, it, it makes for a really, really versatile little reel. And and there's other techniques across the country for uh, for that, not just in Southern California. Yeah. So. That's the thing that's so cool about it is high speed is good, but, you know, back in the old days, 
you know, you never wanted high speed because you couldn't turn the handle. And Shimano was the people who were able to make that, you know, bridge that gap. Like it's when Trinidad came out. Doug always tells a story at the tackle store all the time. And it's like his favorite story to tell when, when that reel first was released, which that's a long time ago long time now. Ago. You know, picked it up. And went, oh my God, this is the best feeling reel I ever had. And then he turned it around and saw where it had the gear ratio six point two to one. Said, I can't believe you did it. You screwed up. You'd had this yeah. most beautiful reel ever. And we're never going to be able to turn the handle. And then, you know, he always talked about it back in Florida Keys when they did the big, brought all the dealers out and hooked a tarp in and was able to turn the handle like it was nothing. It was yeah. like, oh, my God, this is it. You know, it, it just, works. This never was done before. You couldn't have six to one and still have power. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. Well, the phones are packed. They want to talk to Dave, so let's jump into it, Rick. You got it, man. Well, the phones are packed up, and we're going to start it off this morning with Don, who's calling us from Woodland Hills. Don, good morning. Thanks for getting us started here on Let's Talk Hook Up. Hey guys, good morning. Dave, it's, it's always a pleasure listen, listening to you talk about Shimano and Shimano products. <laughs> Thank you. So thanks for being on the, on the program. My, my question is, I was sitting around um, coming back from Guadalupe with a bunch of guys and, and everybody was just really stoked on how well the Talica 12 and 16 performed. We got talking about a forged body versus a machine body. Can you talk a little bit about what the differences are and, and why it's important? Um, yeah, so I I would actually reposition that a little bit to you're looking at either a die cast body so, or a, a forged body. Forged bodies are actually really difficult, and once you forge them, you have to machine it. So it's kind of the same thing. Forging and machining have to go together. So you can either start with okay. the machining um, of more like pipe stock aluminum, which is like a Tiagra body, or some of our other bodies, we forge the basic shape and then machine out the windows and such. So it's really either that or a die cast body. And the main difference is obviously when you when you and I and I'm not an engineer or a manufacturing specialist, so bear with me, but when you die cast you actually, you know, you melt the material, you pour it into a mold. So one, it's more porous and you, you're changing the whole uh, metallurgy. I'm gonna use very basic <laughs> techniques, right? To melt it and pour it into a frame. And then you can't truly anodize die cast. The anodizing will not penetrate that uh, uh, die cast frame with forging you don't forging and or machining you don't change the metallurgy the metal stays in its in its state so to speak and then you can anodize the surface so in in general you get much better tolerances much more precise tolerances with uh, a machined or forged and machined frame and then you get a better surface treatment out of it so that's the basic differences so you'll notice that we use uh, die cast frames on some smaller reels, but we don't use them on, uh, for the most part, on larger reels. Certainly not on Talica, not on Tiagra, uh, not on that type of thing, because we want to have really the most precise um, tolerances and frame dimensions and design, etc., that we can have. So that is a total layman's explanation. <laughs> Good uh, I know engineers that are listening are cringing right now, but that might be the case. But that is basically it. So, and, and one of our advantages is our Ability to work with forging and machining is extremely high as a kind of real capability of Shimano. Wow. All right. Hey, good question. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. All right. How about next up? We talked to Doug, who's got us from Montebello this morning. Good morning, Doug. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Yeah, I was wondering about the surf reel. What would be the smallest reel I could actually get away with? It's about a six-pound line, I guess. Oh, for surf fishing? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, if you're are you using mono or are you using uh, braided line? Um. Uh, right on the bottom, model on yeah. top. Uh, boy, you could probably go with most of our 1,000 sizes or, you know, a, t a 2,500, either one. They're both, I mean, super small and super lightweight these days. But if you went with, you know, even 10-pound test, 8-pound test Power Pro and put a little bit of small mono, I'm, I'm, I don't know why you couldn't get away with a 1,000 size in pretty much any of our spinning reels. Yeah, and that's such a tiny reel with so much power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, at that point, <laughs> fishing such light line, yeah. I'm guessing you're probably fishing six pound floor or something. So, that, yeah, that mm -hmm. small gear, I love that Stratic CI4 Plus. Mm -hmm. That has yeah, just become my, light has light become and, my yeah. spinning reel. They're they're just they're very you know moderately priced. The functionality on them is huge. I love that reel. Yeah. Super lightweight, unbelievably crazy light. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> fantastic reel. Hey, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Speaking of surf fishing, you know. Uh, uh, CCA California, Coastal Conservation of California, both David and I are on the board of directors for CCA, and uh, they have, uh, in conjunction with uh, the, the new Tide Calendar uh, with Bill Varney, 
put the numbers on the back of each one of the tie right. calendars. And next Saturday will be the first announcement for the winner of the CCA drawing. And that winner is going to win a cousin surf fishing rod. Oh, how so cool is that? That's going to be next Saturday right here on Let's Talk Hookup. So buy your calendars if you haven't already. On the back is a number. And, of course, all that, all the proceeds uh, go to benefit CCA California, which is so important. And also I want to throw out a big thank you to Steve Pinard from Dana Landing yesterday. That was cool. And all the people that joined CCA yesterday, Wayne, said we had a tremendous response. He gave away a $40 gift card to either East County Bait and Tackle or Dana Landing yesterday for everybody that joined. Wow, that's, I mean, that's amazing. You made money on that deal because yeah, yeah. you joined CCA for 30 bucks and you get a $40 yeah. gift card. So he yeah, said a lot of people joined. That's so, that so cool. Good CCA yeah, is something we can talk about you know, a lot. It's, it's so important for us to get a solid conservation group in place in Southern California, and CCA is the group. I, I wouldn't be involved in it if I didn't think so. I see what they do in, uh, all across the country. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's incredibly important. And, you know, we're at a point where over 99% of what we do is volunteer. It's not – we're not all paid. I'm not paid to be on the board. You're not paid. We we need more people being involved. Everyone wants us to, well, CCA, what are you going to do about the bluefin issue? What are you going to do about, you know, access to the islands in Mexico? What do you, And it's like we want to do something about all of it, but we can't yeah. <laughs> until we have, you know, more and more – volunteers more and more revenue more and more of everything and that's why we're starting we have the san diego chapter the orange county chapter and the local chapters so people can really get involved i mean this is organized far deeper and differently than any previous uh, conservation group here so it, it is literally built to last and but we we need more people if we if if i throw it back to everyone out there if you want more done we need more people. Absolutely. That's as yeah. simple as the equation gets. We need gets. more chapters, and this is the proven model that's been proven it itself to work in Texas and Florida, yes. Louisiana, all these places. It's working. Those right states. There, and they're, making, they're making strides. Those states have hundreds of thousands of dollars in local chapter revenue mm-hmm. for artificial reef building, for uh, repopulating fish, for reclaiming wetlands, for all these kind of things that we know we need here. But people can't look to the organization and say you have to do all this and not be a member because we still don't have enough members or enough revenue. So I just appeal to everybody really, really, really strongly. I mean, we have serious people involved with CCA Cal that are working really hard to make this happen all in their spare time. And, um, you know, but we need more people. You bet. So we need them to get involved in local chapters and make it happen. Yeah. Your next effort, mixed major fundraiser effort will be at the Fred Hall show. Uh, both the shows will be uh, uh, doing special deals to uh, to get members. You'll be able yeah. to get into the show free by joining CCA, which is a real nice thing. And then you get the booklet that's going to give you all kinds of great discounts, which we'll talk more about as, as it come along. So, yes, join CCA. Everybody who listens to this show, please, please, this is our, this is our hope. No this doubt. is the future. Well no said. Doubt. Hey, thanks a lot for joining us here. 858-457-1090 or 877-792-1090. All the lines are full. We're giving away the ultimate. No kidding, man. Wind power, Shimano spinning reel, 14,000, which will make a believer out of you once you hook a big fish on. I can promise you that. Let's go ahead and jump into the phone. You got it, man. How about we talk to Matt? He's calling us from La Mesa this morning. Matt, good morning. Thanks for joining us on Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. Hi, Matt. I'll- Always fun to talk to you, Dave. It's amazing your wealth of uh, information that uh, comes with your product. Well, thank you. A um, couple of questions. One, are you going to be um, introducing another small two-speed um, conventional reel like what's already on the market? And two, um, if you're fortunate enough to win this um, spinning reel, um, do you have to buy a Darth Vader um, helmet because now you've gone to quote the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me start with the second question first. And I wouldn't call it the dark side. I didn't call it the enlightened side. <laughs> enlightened so I'm not side. sure yeah, what really. color helmet you wear on the enlightened side. But um, I think the smile on your face once you once you you know catch a big tune on it will be all that you need to know. As far as the two speed lever drags, you know we're. I I can't say anything you know def, definite right now, but we're always looking at. Where is that market going? What's the trend? What do we need to do um, next in, in that market? And, you know, with Talica, we have a really, really good product that seems to be, you know, really kind of, in my opinion, coming of age um, now in terms of everything that it can do and, and all the techniques. But, yeah, we're always looking at that and, and studying how we can make that market uh, better and different. You know, it's very interesting that the market is really polarizing between 
um, sort of real traditional techniques of bigger lever drags in some parts of the country and all these varied smaller lever drag techniques where people want to go smaller and lighter and lighter and lighter. So there's still a lot to learn and there's still a lot of new sort of uh, horizons or fronts there that we can um, that we can go after with small lever drags. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep innovating there for sure. Good one, Matt. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Uh, question on... You know, rail technique yeah. has become very, very popular here in Southern California. I love the rail. <laughs> I hook a big fish. It's, rail is your friend as yes, well. Yes, it is. is. Um, Matt brings up the fact that there is no rail when it comes to spinning reels. And no. you hook a big fish. No. So how do you combat that? That's why I say you got to adjust your technique by, by being in a position to move the boat. And when you're using spinning, look, if you're, again, if you're sitting there on anchor, and, and you'll notice when I talked about fishing the tanner or the, the – uh, uh, desperation. I didn't talk about fishing the spinning. I wasn't. I was fishing straight up conventional, and uh, I, and, and I an will. An anchor from an anchor speed speed conventional. <clears throat> right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or the the Trank's power gear. I, I fish that on on desperation. But um, when you're in a situation where you need to make long casts and your boat is mobile, there's no reason not to. And just learn to move the boat with the fish, and and you will be amazed at the cranks you can get and the power that you can put. Uh, on that fish, or the pressure you can put on that fish. So, but again, not I. I, I really wouldn't do it so much on a on a on a boat that's a, sitting in a place. Sport boat or anchored boat. Yeah, because you now have to fight that fish in its circles. Yeah. And when I'm fighting a fish in its circles, I want to use the rail and I want to use two speed. Yep. And I want to be done with it. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I like it. Hey, when we come back, we got a whole lot more. Let's talk hookup coming your way. More your phone calls. More great questions. More catch reports. You stay tuned. It's Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. This is Pete Gray to tell you about one of my favorite places to fish in the world. It's Whaler's Cove Lodge in Angoon, Alaska. For several years now, we've been hosting groups at Whaler's Cove, and this is certainly one trip I do not miss. Each year, the Powers family makes great improvements to the lodge that make this great lodge even better. New rooms, new boats, new fish processing facilities, new outdoor kitchen. The list goes on and on. As for fishing, the calm waters around Whaler's Cove are 100 miles from any large town, so you will enjoy wilderness adventure without the crowds. Whaler's Cove Lodge has some of the best salt and freshwater fishing in Alaska, and there's no need for a bumpy boat ride for hours. You can find productive fishing for salmon, halibut, and rockfish just 10 minutes from the lodge. Here's the deal. The word is out on Whaler's Cove, so you want to go? Book soon. Whalerscovelodge.com or call 800-423-3123. Whalerscovelodge.com for the Alaska fishing experience of a lifetime. Hey, you know, the Los Angeles Boat Show is coming this Thursday, the 19th through Sunday, the 22nd. And it's at a new location, the Fairplex in Promonia. Promonia, it's right there, convenient, located at all points. You don't have to go to downtown L.A. to go see a great boat show, the Los Angeles Boat Show anymore. Right there at the Fairplex in Promona. New models, the latest marine gear, tech gadgets and accessories. There's going to be all kinds of great stuff for the kids. The whole family is welcome. Admission's just $15, and kids 12 and under are free, and there's discounts available for active military, too. So check it out. The Los Angeles Boat Show, now at the Fairplex in Pomona, January 19th to the 22nd. Check out LosAngelesBoatShow.com for more details. Have you been looking for a live bait hook that keeps live bait alive? Look no further than Japan's leading fish hook, Gamakatsu. It's the little things that make the difference, and Gamakatsu hooks drive the point home. With an absolute perfect bend and ideal barbs, your bait swims harder and longer. And when you get bit, Gamakatsu hooks bite back with a vengeance. All hooks are not the same. Go with Gamakatsu for infinite success. Gamakatsu, simply the best. Check Gamakatsu.com. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, CalStar. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the CalStar West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend CalStar at fine tackle stores everywhere. It's time for our Power Pro 30-second seminar. And I tell you what, with Power Pro, what I like about it is the knot strength. You tie a knot with Power Pro, whether it be a John Collins knot, an Albright knot, a uh, back-to-back uni, they 
hold and work with PowerPro. Yeah, the line is just not stiff. It's the perfect amount of round. It has good abrasion resistance, and it's just easier for connections than other types of line out there. Indeed, PowerPro at your favorite tackle store or check out PowerPro.com. You're listening to the home of the Aztecs. Put that slam dunk. That's what I'm talking about. San Diego sports leader, the mighty 1090. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. As promised, it's time to find out what's biting out there today. Catch for a sponsor in part by Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. Fisherman's Processing is San Diego's finest, and that's why they're known as the Fish Pros. Once you try them, you will be hooked. They'll fillet your fish, vacuum pack your fish, all to your specs, as well as offer the best in smoked fish, jerky, and the famous Fisherman's Processing tuna burger. Check Fisherman'sProcessing.com for more details, or you can see them when your trip returns to the San Diego landings. And hey, let's start off the catch port with a little bonus today. We got Captain Frank Lapresti on the line. Good morning, Frank. Hey, how you doing, Rich? We're doing morning, fantastic. Frank. Okay, well, I know those Shimano products are some of the finest, but I don't know if I'd be calling it the enlightened side. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. That's just because you're not enlightened yet, Frank. <laughs> I, I, guess, I guess not. All right, well, I wanted to let you know, uh, Rich, that the Shogun come back, came back today from uh, Guadalupe. He had some beautiful yellow fin and some beautiful yellow tail. However, the trip was not as good as it has been. Aaron said he saw acres and acres of yellow fin, and the lines would be right drifting right into them, and they would not bite, even on 40-pound tests. So... Fish are still there. They're just not biting. And uh, meanwhile, the Liberty returns with uh, 28 yellowtail, 65 rockfish, and 15 lings. Nice. And um, Royal Polaris, I just talked to Roy. He'll be calling me in a little bit. He's had some very, very good fishing uh, in the buffer zone, and he'll be giving you a check here shortly, okay? Uh, fantastic, Frank. Really good stuff there, Frank. Right, good to hear. Now, do you have any spots available on the Royal Players of the Shogun coming up here, Frank? Uh, let's see. On the show, on the Royal Players, we have some trips open on April 22nd, the Tony Garza 15-day trip. Uh, and meanwhile, just to mention again, on the Liberty, he's running every weekend down to Colonnette, so if anybody's interested in a day-and-a-half trip, they can book online through Fisherman's Landing. Shogun has some trips open uh, to Guadalupe Island in May. So if anybody's interested, they can take a look and check that out, okay? I just want to say, too, for the Liberty, I got a chance to fish on a day-and-a-half trip earlier in the season with those guys. I just want people to realize, too, how comfortable of a boat that is to be down there for that time, especially having... The bathroom, shower facility, how crazy good the food is, how comfortable the boat is. So, I mean, just throwing that out there on, I mean, I don't think that there's a more comfortable platform that's fishing Colinet right now. I've heard a lot of great things about that. Really nice. That boat. Yeah, I really have. Good one. Well, sure. thank you very much, Rick. It was just, you know, it was fun to watch them, watch them unload this morning. Every customer was so grateful to the crew. You could tell the crew just did a phenomenal job, and Charles doing a great job, so... People will, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that haven't even fished the boat yet because it's just, as you well know, it's pretty new in the water. So, okay, Rick, thank you very much, and uh, good luck with your spinning reel when you catch that 250 pound. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Captain Frank Lopez, the Royal Polaris. Appreciate the call this morning. Uh, thank you. All right, well, let's continue on with our catch report. We're going to talk to Shane this morning. I'm assuming calling us from Dana Wharf Sport Fishing. What's up, Shane? Hey, good morning, guys. How are you? We're doing fantastic. Good morning. Well, what's biting? Uh, let's get started here. The sculpin fishing, guys, has been uh, off the hook for a three-quarter day run lately. Nice. Um, we've had no problem filling everyone's bag with a limited sculpin, pretty much finishing early and catching some bass later in the day on those trips. Uh, it's been great. So we're fortunate to have that fishery right now. Our half-day stuff, kind of typical this time of the year, uh, that bass fishing, you know, with the right conditions, still picking a few on the fly line sardine and some swim bait action, working them slow, finesse kind of style. Still taking away there on the half day zone too. So, and as well as our halibut derby, you know, full swing still. Leaderboard is full now. Hopefully, start knocking some names off and mixing it up there. So, but um, yeah, everything's been good. Sculpting fishing, been staying busy with that stuff, and you know, plugging away. Jesus. Oh, eating well with the sculpin. One of the sure. best. Definitely some good stuff, oh, for sure. So tasty. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Well, Shane, if somebody wants to come fishing, Dana Wharf Sport Fishing, how do we do that? So you guys can call the landing, 
you guys can look us up, DanaWorf.com. And you can uh, link us on your page, uh, Let's Talk Let's Talk Hookup page, save a little bit of money. Yeah, absolutely. That great banner uh, on the front page of the Let's Talk Hookup website, hookup1090.com. Just click on that and save. Big bucks on a half or three-quarter day trip. Appreciate the call this morning. Talk to you guys next week. Thanks, guys. Have a good week. Thanks, Shane. Great job. Hey, let's continue with the catch port. Hit the surf zone, our surf fishing report with the man, the guru of the surf, Gundy Gunderson. What's up, Gundy? Hey, what's going on, you guys? Gundy, hey, you are. <laughs> yeah, not much, the, not, not much cooperation with the beach this week or whatever, <laughs> but, uh, that. you know, there was some important highlights and a couple things to look at. First of all, uh, you know, like I said, tough conditions, but hook, line, and sinker up there reported that their guys throwing those lucky craft uh, stuck like half a dozen stripers up there. Now, that area there, it's less urban, so the water tends to clean up a little quicker, so you see a quicker bounce back there, but... It's a good sign, and there's a lot of places down the beach where you're going to find those striped bass, too. And that kind of leads into our second part here is uh, all the reports from my tackle shops, uh, the guys are telling me it's a real nice reconfiguration of the beach, you know, new sandbars, new trenches, new rips, you know. So that portends some nice catches in the future, and the guys are already finding some fish in those in those new trenches. Uh, big fish reported Real good halibut action. It was all small fish, but the guys were getting up to half a dozen fish a day. I think a 21-inch fish was the better one. But lying in that trench, Bolsa Chica, 72nd place, you know, places like that. And, of course, it's window fishing. you got to fish those windows of better weather. But uh, you watch those trenches will be filling with fish as we move into better weather in spring. And, you know, the tactic on that is, is work those trenches, work those rips, with those lucky craft, those hard jerk baits, uh, I think red and black was the color of the guy it was good with the overcast skies. But uh, you're also fishing for striped bass, so you might hang a nice striped bass if you're anywhere near a freshwater source, a lagoon mouth, a river mouth, a harbor mouth, jetties. You know, you always stand a chance, so you're kind of dual fishing there, and that, that's probably the best tactic going forward here until we get some uh, better weather. But uh, interesting stuff always in the surf, and that's what's developing right now. <clears throat> yeah, man. Good stuff, Gundy. Good stuff. And appreciate all that you do. And uh, get out there and go fishing. That's it. Thanks, right. Gundy. All Thanks, right. Gundy. Appreciate good that. Good show, gentlemen. Have a good week. Talk to you next week. <clears throat> all right. We're jumping right back into the phones. They are packed up. Let's talk to John. He's called us from Huntington Beach this morning. Hi, John. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, great show, as always. Um, got a question for uh, Dave regarding his um, his boat and and. Just to set up the background, I'm a, a private boater, and I have um, made a couple of trips with some guys that we, we took out boats that were pretty loaded down with bait and fuel and tackle and all kinds of stuff. And we, one time we couldn't even get on a plane. It was, it was pretty loaded down uh, trying to, to get out to the tuna. Um, and other times um, we get on a plane, that, but we're just cruising at 28 knots or, or better. That's the... It's either, like, uh, really slow or super fast. And I just, you know, where 20, 15 or 20 would probably, 20 knots would probably be a better ride. So I was wondering if you had any recommendations on either a hull power combination or something that um, for, for our Southern California sport fishing zone or what is, like, what is your boat's best cruising speed? Um, you know, wow, there, that, there's a lot of answers to, uh, to that question. You know, my boat, fortunately, my best cruising speed is right at about 30 to 32 knots. Um, but, you know, I've got a great power combination on it, and I've got really big trim tabs, which is what I wanted. And I think Yamaha out, power, <laughs> you know, t- yeah, twin 300 Yamahas, and I've got these huge racing Mercury trim tabs, and they're fantastic. And I think a lot of boats out here are, uh, from what I see, a lot not just out here, a lot of places, you're either a little bit underpowered or the weight distribution is not really great or you don't have enough on the trim tabs. Really good big trim tabs can make a huge difference in controlling your, you know, how, our, uh, uh, the sort of the attitude of the boat in the water and um, then also how you offset the load. So um, not knowing what kind of boat you have or what kind of power you have on it, it you know, it's hard to say. And then you, you, know, you can get into the finer details, props. That's what you know, a lot of things. things but popped into my mind about his particular issue is 
potential prop problem. It, it certainly could be a prop. Um, I just I see more and more that you know most of the standard trim tabs that the boats use out here they're just not big enough for the small. kind of loads yeah. because we take a, a basic boat and we do what the factory doesn't expect everyone to do out here, which is put a giant bait tank in the middle of the back deck, and then we put three guys on the back deck. And if you're looking at something that's in the 20 foot class. You know, that wasn't in mind when they rated the power and everything. And uh, But it doesn't mean the boat doesn't have enough power. It might not. But I think that the, the trim tabs can really overcome a lot of that to really get the back of the boat out of the water and allow the engine to do its job. Then there's the height of the motor. There's the prop. So there's a lot of factors. So really, without knowing all that, and I am not a, a boat expert by any means. I do have a lot of experience in a lot of different boats. It's really hard to say where you're, um, you know, where you're at or where your issue is on that to, to correct. Go see your local dealer. Go over to West Coast Marine, the Parker dealer there, and talk to Kevin and the guys over there. They may have some insight for you and maybe even help you maybe prop better or put some new trim tabs on there. might help out. Hey, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. This week's edition of Western Outdoor News, loaded with good stuff. Check it out. Calico fishing. It's on. You heard Benny Florentino that yesterday talking yesterday. about it. So yeah. uh, good good uh, info on hunting. And uh, with all this rain, the ducks are finally flying and all yeah. that good stuff. So check it out. This week's edition of Western Outdoor News. Let's jump back in the phones, Rick. You got it. How about this time? <laughs> Pardon me. We talked to Bob, who's calling us from Santee this morning. Hi, Bob. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, good morning, guys. Hi, Bob. Good morning. Really glad to hear the news about the uh, Tranks 300 and 400. I'll have to add those to my collection. <laughs> but my, my, question, my question about the spinning wheels is when you're making a long cast with those poppers and you've got a lot of braid out there and you're working that lure back and you hook a fish relatively close, is there any issues with the line digging into the spool when that fish puts a lot of pressure on it? No, uh-uh. not Certainly not any more or any different than you would have uh, on a conventional reel. Now, the nature of popper fishing is uh, because you're doing like a, a tension slack, tension slack, the line is a little looser on the spool than normal. What I learned, again, another learning on the popper fishing, both with conventional and with spinning, is I fish a really medium drag at the start because when that fish grabs that popper, I don't want like immediate bury down to, you know, 30 pounds of drag. So I, I, I back way off on the drag to start, enough to set the hook and let him make that first run, which they always do, and then I go up on the drag. So to your point, that's one way also to offset a little bit of that inherent sort of loose line that you have on the spool just from the sort of slack tension, slack tension as your, you know, winding line on the spool. Um, but I found that was really, really, really important. I lost some fish where I had the drag just, you know, hammered at the start, and they grab that plug, and they do their head shake back and forth, which they do. And then when they turn to go, I was pulling hooks on fish. And as soon as I started fishing with a much more moderate drag right at the beginning, I, I, I that sort of came to an end. So the, One of the things that I was envisioning is you were kind of retelling the whole season story. And, you know, one of the problems that we would run into with conventional, because admittedly we fished with nothing but conventional the entire time, and had plenty of successes. The one of the major downsides to it was a lot of spots that you a lot of spots that you came up on just exactly as Dave described. You need to make a long cast. You need to make an accurate cast. You need to make it when the boat was still you know slightly moving ahead. Um, and if you didn't get bit on that first cast, but the spot was still up to give you a second cast, it was rare. And I've fished with guys that that's what they do. And, you know, very very accomplished fishermen. It's very rare that you could ever make a second cast accurate just because of the nature of loading when you weren't using tranks, you know, and mm -hmm. same thing. We had like a size class of fish when we felt, okay, the fisher, ours was, we always called it 125 pounds, 125 pounds or less were fishing tranks. When they were over that, we fished with a Talica 12 and just the nature of loading gear line back onto the reel, because just like you described, you're slack and then you're in gear and you could either look at your reel and pinch your line nice and tight and get it back on on straight or you could watch the popper and watch what the fish are doing but you couldn't do both yeah, at least both. i couldn't do both no. and maybe there's guys better than that but like you had that's another thing that that spinning is going to give you is you don't get bit on the first cast you fire right back out and you're just as good and and when you were when i was fishing my tac 12 which we were very successful with you you pretty much were you were pretty much one and done. I mean you were one really good one and done. And the second one you had to know that your line is loose and it's not going to come off as good. So you had to purposely put a lot less into your rod when you're making your cast and if the spot was a long ways away then 
Yeah. You were toast. Dave, yeah. do you think that you get better action on the popper from a spinning reel versus a Tranks? I, I do. Yeah. Generally speaking, I think you have a lot more versatility in how to work the popper. And, again, our popper bite, I never found that they wanted this pop, the popper fast at all. I think that was a real downside. So You said a lot of bites were on the just sitting just there. Just dead stick but or very slow. Pop, sit pop sit and and you know to ricky's point if you're not paying attention on on a conventional you look you end of your cash you look down and you're all piled up in the middle or you're piled up on the side just because using your thumb and all that is difficult now but coming back to frank's point you know it brings up the whole sport boat issue because primarily everything i've talked about so far is i'm coming from a private boat perspective the sport boat is a whole different scenario and you know i know that that generally speaking the sport boat struggled on the popper bite because you're faced with that situation of how do you make a long enough cast from wherever you are on the sport boat to get the popper to where the fish are. And then the whole thing, as I was saying, you know, they're not going to move the sport boat for you to catch your fish. So you got to make a choice. I'm not saying that, that in certain situations spinning reels don't have a place on the sport boats, but in a straight up and down bu- uh, fight, you can't use the rail. So it's a, it's a much, much more complex issue on no the question. sport boat than it is on the private boat. So I just want to mention that everything that I'm talking about is a private boat because if you're fishing sport boats all the time, you're, you're probably listening to this and saying, ah, you know, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And you, you know what? You're largely true yeah. because that's not the platform that I'm really, you know, then you want to go with tranks. here. Uh, well, tranks. Yeah. If you can, depends on size of the fish. You got, you know, you got a whole group of people waiting on you to catch a fish. I mean, it, it's a lot more complex situation. Popper fishing from a sport boat. Matt Bralla, who fishes with us a lot, who's like the deck boss for Ryan Boston on the San Diego, you know, our gear all went through all these evolutions, just like you were talking about, in a completely different path. But, you know, when we started the season till when we ended it, he started one way and reverted back to fishing a long top shot of 50-pound mono and a Trinidad 30, a little wider to get the line capacity, strictly for casting reasons. Mm-hmm. Because that reel he could cast a long ways every time and never worried about backlash. You know, I mean, it just on a reel like that, mono is easier to cast. So there's no there was lots of ways to skin that cat. You just, yeah. just there's a it. lot of ways to adapt. You just have to do it given all of your circumstances, yeah. and all of your factors. But again, you know we're catching big tough fish. This is not about 40 and 50 pound yeah. fish. This is like 100, 150 right. plus pound fish and being ready for whatever that might might bring. Okay, we'll be ready. Yeah, yeah, baby. You need to come. <laughs> I yeah, like it. Come. Exactly. Hey, now that we all know everything, yeah. we need to yeah, come. Yeah, you need to come. Hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. I'm going to cut out here. I have to go jump on a plane to Puerto Vallarta and meet up with our group on the Journeyman two and a half day, heading out this afternoon. Have some good reports, some big tuna down there from Captain Russell o- O'Neill and the Journeyman. Turn it, turn it over to Dave and pack Rock Todd Rick. Hope you packed your poppers. I got my poppers. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, stay tuned. Another full hour. Let's talk hook up on the Mighty Ten Night. I got my line in the water. Rock Cod Rick here for West Coast Marine and Parker Boats. You see them all over Southern California waters. Parker Boats at the launch ramp, the offshore islands. You wake up in the morning on an overnight trip, and there they are. Parker Boats of all size fishing in the same area as the sporties. There's a good reason for it. Fishability and seaworthiness. Of all the boats out there, my boat partner and I chose to get a brand new 25 Parker Center Console from Kevin Kelly and the gang at West Coast Marine, and I could not be happier. Wow, what a fishing machine. Parker Marine builds a heavy-duty, industrial strength boat probably overbuilt but that's why so many four and six pack charters choose to operate parkers we thank the guys at pinnacle sport fishing season sport fishing one man charters black and blue sport fishing for their confidence in parker boats take it from me if you are ready for a new parker at a fair upfront and honest deal you need to see kevin kelly at west coast marine located at 1555 newport boulevard in costa mesa or check out their inventory and information at westcoastmarine.com for local and long-range fishing the islander out of fisherman's landing is a favorite among seasoned or novice anglers but islander charters is much more than great fishing they also do incredible guadalupe white shark diving trips as well as a schedule of kayak mothership trips You need to check out the Islander on their website, islander-charters.com. The Islander is San Diego's leader when it comes to two- to five-day fishing. Watch the website for trips and adventures available. Experience the Islander difference. Visit islander-charters.com for all the details. 
Alaska is one of the ultimate fishing destinations in the world. This is Rock Cod Rick, and every year the one trip I look forward to is Kingfisher Charters in Sitka, Alaska. My dad and I have been going for over 15 years, and I just can't wait to go again. No one does it better than Kingfisher Charters. They offer the best service, the most comfortable accommodations, fantastic food, the finest fishing charter captains in all of Sitka, and the ultimate value. Sure, I've been to others, but time and time again, nobody beats Kingfisher Charters. You can catch huge halibut like the ones we do almost every Every year and salmon well sitka is famous for some of the best runs in alaska we also get plenty of rockfish and huge lingcod and when it comes to fish processing the best in alaska is kingfisher charters and listen to this it's all included in your package in fact everything is included except the tips it's truly amazing how the kingfisher crew continues the quality of service they deliver year after year come and join me on the let's talk hookup trip in june or just go when you can kingfisher charters 800-727-6136 or check kingfisherchargers.com. XFRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. The best coverage of the NFL playoffs and Super Bowl 51 is right here. San Diego sports leader, the mighty 1090 here. I was fortunate enough to use the new Simrad NSS Evo 2 touchscreen chart plotter and sonar unit on my boat this summer and fall. And let me say, it's truly incredible. With an easy-to-use tablet-style interface that's fresh but familiar, the new Simrad NSS Evo 2 combines a multi-touch screen with push-to-select rotary dial for precision control and speedy response. As for marking schools of tuna, yellowtail, and more, it's the best. You run over a school and there they are in full color and high definition. The new NSS Evo 2 built-in sonar technology including chirp and structure scan can't be beat. I recently added the Simrad AP24 autopilot to my system. I've had other autopilots before but I can tell you this one is simple, sensitive and accurate. It integrates with my Simrad NSS Evo 2. I set a waypoint, touch the screen and the boat steers to that spot. There's a lot more to the new Simrad NSS Evo 2 system and AP24 autopilot I'd like to tell you but best just go to your local Simrad dealer or see simrad-yachting.com for more details. Let's talk candidly about long range fishing. This is Captain Frank Lepresti of the Royal Polaris and the Shogun. Nowhere on earth will you find a fleet of long range boats like we have in San Diego. We are fortunate to have several top notch operations to take you to the most productive fishing grounds in the world. We all offer good food, comfortable staterooms, huge bait capacity, and top-of-the-line fish-finding electronics. So why would you choose the Royal Polaris or the Shogun for your next long-range trip? What sets us apart from the rest? It's pretty simple. The boats, the crew, and the service. From the moment you arrive at Fisherman's Landing, the service begins. We help you load your gear and do everything possible to get beginners or seasoned veterans ready to catch fish. When it's time to fish, the Royal Polaris and the Shogun have the edge there, too, delivering the two best fishing platforms in the fleet. But don't don't take my word for it. Come fishing with us. If you want the best, it's Royal Polaris and the Shogun. For more information, call 619-226-8030 or on the web at royalpolarissportfishing.com or shogunsportfishing.com. Turner's Outdoorsman, Southern California's number one shooting, hunting, and fishing tackle retailer since 1971, is right in your neighborhood. Now 18 stores throughout Southern California and three in San Diego County. Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prices and selection, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Stop by your neighborhood Turner's Outdoorsman. To find the location nearest you, check the web at turners.com and sign up for special deals and more. <laughs> 